that was an eventful season. Glad it ended because I, t I couldn't go on anymore. Um, losing finals and final game of the season and losing the league, etc. But yeah, let's talk about the season overall and do a review. Let's do this, people. Let's do this. Yes, people, welcome to LFC Red Forever channel. Before we start, you know the drill. Please follow us on our social medias, uh, which is Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. If you haven't followed us or subscribed to any of those, please do that for us. Much appreciated for all the people that's come on and, you know, participated in the channel. It means a lot and, you know, it helps me come back for more. So we're going to be doing a season review, um, how the season went and ups and downs and uh, you could just put your thoughts in the comment section like always and uh, we'll discuss it there if I haven't got if I haven't got back to you in, in certain ones I will do that sometime today so much appreciated for putting your comments through um, so let's start with the Premier League innit? let's do the biggest one of the lot of course you know it's a long hard season and um, it's just it, it's sad the way it turned out <clears throat> But sometimes you just got to get on with it, if you know what I mean. Uh, the season was never in our hands, and um, it's just unfortunate we drew too many games. It's, it's another season that like, we've lost the league by one point, and um, Man City won again. You know what I mean? So it's it's, it's frustrating. It's, it's it's really frustrating in my opinion because you put all that hard work on it. And then in the last game of the season, you lose the league by one point for the second time uh, versus Man City. You know, last last season, Man City won the league by, uh, obviously, I think it was 86 points. They were way ahead of everyone else. Liverpool was like in the dumps because of the injuries we had. People can say that's excuses, but when you're m missing the majority of your first teamers uh, and then you base it on this season, it shows the levels we was at. Uh, we was like in January, uh, top of the league. We lost Matt Tip to injury uh, against the um, uh, Tottenham away. And the season was never the same again because we started playing Henderson and Fabinho at the back. Uh, and then we just started trusting Phillips and uh, Reese Williams. And we just went on a, get on, a, on, a, on a run that got us back into the Champions League and we finished third. So it shows the quality and difference when you haven't got the best uh, players available uh, in, that, in those positions like uh, centre-back and, you know, in midfield. Um, and this season proved it. The thing with this season was we started off slow. We was drawing with our rivals at home. Well, we should be normally beating them, the likes of like, obviously Chelsea, Manchester City, and um, we didn't, we didn't beat them. Even when we went away, we draw two as well. <laughs> we draw with Tottenham and Man City away as well. Uh, you could say um, the, the so the Spurs game was a, a controversial game because Harry Kane should have got sent off, and we should have got a penalty for that as well. And yeah, sometimes when like things don't go your way. That's what happens, and it was just unfortunate in that game. We didn't get the three points. Maybe those three points could have could have won us the league. Maybe it wouldn't. You know, what I mean, you don't know how the season is going to turn out as it goes on. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, Man City is in our way. Is if it's a different season, we probably would have won it like twenty times in the season, uh, in different seasons. Sorry, but football. That's how it is. It's just how the thing is. How you come over it. Like, how do you? 
um, find your way out of it because if it's no Man City, there's going to be another team doing the same thing as well. Um, look at when Man United were dominating, we couldn't get to them. Look at when Chelsea was dominating, we couldn't get to them. Look at when Arsenal was dominating, we couldn't get to them. So it's always someone that's ahead of us, but you have to find a way to be ahead of them. The, the thing is, with, with these seasons in the city, you have to be near perfect. I mean, even though we drew a lot, but we've only lost twice. Even that uh, uh, um, um, we drew a lot in 2008-2009 season against Man United, we only lost twice as well. I mean, even the season we lost the league, I think we only lost uh, before this one about one point. I think we only lost one one game in the whole season. So it doesn't really matter. You have to get those wins on board and um, don't trust anybody else to, you know, get to where you want to get to. But Because <laughs> Man City are relentless. Look, look what they've done. Even that they won the league, uh, um, the, se the season that's just gone, they bought a couple of strikers. And the top strikers as well. You know what I mean? So, what are we going to do? What are we going to do to counter-attack Man City next season? That's what I want to know. And um, uh, what's our ambitions uh, going forward from here? Um, let me let me show you, uh, obviously, the, the league. <clears throat> you can see for yourself. It's only one point. And uh, they drew. And it was uh, the last six games. We drew one. That was the Spurs game. Um, the goal difference they caught up we was like ahead majority of the season they caught up and they overtaken us um, goals against is similar um, goals for obviously 94 99 so, so you can see you can see like it wasn't like that much of a difference between them but they get the wins that's the thing I mean we lost two they lost three Draws eight six. You know what I mean? It's really frustrating, honestly. It's really frustrating, and I, I don't know what to say about it, people. Like we can't keep going into like season in, season out, and um, blaming City for our detriment. You know what I mean? Like what happened to us? We have to find a way. Like I said, I mean. Uh, we're relying on Aston Villas of this world, West Ham of this world, you know, like Man United of this world. You know, these are our rivals as well. They don't want Liverpool get getting twenty Man United, do they? So you know, what I mean? and 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 you know, they they brainwashed other teams to you know to hate Liverpool as well. So you just got to find a way. You just got to find a way for you to beat your rivals in in in, in especially in the home games. You know what I mean? The away games are difficult enough and uh, we had that opportunity against Man City this season at Etihad and it looked like they respected us that, uh, than we respected them because we played our game that we normally do but they played a different way that Bernardo Silva was deep lying in midfield uh, with uh, um, Rodri and, and, and they protected the back four. Yes, we scored twice but we conceded twice and they they scored their goals because we're just nice. One was like the Bruyne getting past Fabinho so easily. If it was them, they would bring the uh, Bruyne down. If he was playing for Liverpool, if it's us, we're just nice. We let people through. You know, just go through. It's like a nightclub, isn't it? Just yeah, yeah go through, go through. You don't even need that. You don't even need to, sh need to show me your ID. Yeah, that's that's what I mean about Liverpool. That's what we need to do next season. We need to, we need to be a midfielder that puts the fear on the opponents that make you know the ones that step on your toes and they don't, don't even get a yellow card they hurt the players I mean I'm not saying like end, like season ending injuries like Everton would do to Liverpool not like that but you know I don't want to mess with that guy man because he keeps like you know stepping on my toes hurting me and he, he's like a, he's like a brick I mean, that's what we need we don't need nice we don't need to be nice I'm tired of being nice because it never works Look at the league. Look, look, look at the league. Look. They they got there by fouling people in the midfield and getting what they want. We didn't do that. We just let people do whatever they want. So we got to change. And there's another thing we got to change as well that this deep line defending teams. We got to find a way to, you know, get the goals. I remember the season we won the league 
we were scoring from set pieces on a regular basis from deep line defending teams because we couldn't open them up what's happened to that yes we scored the most set pieces this season but that's just the normal games not against not against the teams that deep line defend on a regular basis especially at the end of the season like when when the league is coming to the climax the the the, 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 the near the end these teams, for some reason or another, love to put themselves in a deep line defending. But then again, you've got to understand they're fighting relegation or they're fighting for Europe, European place. So they don't want to lose that game. They need a point or points on the board no matter what. So yeah, so this is this is how it's going to be. like. And next season, in, in my opinion, because I've had enough of the deep line defending teams, we just got to find a way to score a goal. And... Um, Beat them. We just gotta find a way. We have this is the training we have to do for next season. Military military training next season to compete with these deep line defending teams because that's Liverpool's kryptonite at the moment. And it doesn't matter if it's wet away, if it doesn't matter if it's at home, it's always the same result. Either a draw or you know a loss, sometimes a win, but it's just too much of this and uh, it's too many seasons of the same stuff and it's really really frustrating people and I'm, 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 I'm not happy with that like I, I thought like by this time we solved that issue uh, with deep line defending teams and uh, it, it looks like we, it, it, come on it hasn't been um, am I happy with the season listen I didn't expect us to come back especially with the draws we had in the beginning of the season and I did predict uh, for us to win the league I did say that because of the players we got and the players that came back from injury but it took us a while to get to our rhythm and uh, it was just unfortunate it was too late by the time we did that and the players got tired at the end let's just be honest people that Tottenham game that was not Liverpool playing we were just poor from the first minute to the last minute even when they scored a goal like take a red sort of take a yellow card or something man like why are you letting Harry Kane control the ball uh, edge of your box? You know what I mean? Come on. This is this is the difference. City would actually bring Harry Kane down and take the yellow card. Trent just let him pass. And he went all the way to the wing to pass it to, to pass it to Cicinho and he, he crossed it into Son for the far post. Uh, Robertson was playing everyone on side, who was dizzy by the way in that game as well, which was selfish from him. And they scored a goal. 1-0 up we struggled to get back into the game and we scored a deflection goal from Diaz we couldn't score like at right goal but it was deflection because they were deep line defending and we struggled to open them up yeah so there's, there's lots to work with and that's the to me that is the most important one I don't want to hear Klopp coming out after the game and saying this is not football I don't want to be playing this kind of football with opponents this would play that that kind of football but that's the way they play because they pay you respects and they know you're better than them. Come on. We can't keep blaming other teams for for our faults. If they play deep like that's there, it's down to them. Let them make the game boring. It's up to them. But we if we get a couple of goals up, they have to come out and get a goal. So they will be open up even more. Uh, that's what Man City do. They get a goal in the first few minutes so the other teams can come out and they counter attack on them and, and get some goals. That's what the Man City do all the time. If you get to 30 minutes, that's when Man City start struggling because they can't. They put all their energy in the first 30 minutes and the other team comes into it. You saw the Aston Villa game. If Aston Villa had uh, the bench of Man City, maybe Man City would have won that. Like, they would have uh, won that game. They would, they would probably lost because they were two nil up, 15 minutes to go, etc. And they wouldn't actually win that game. But Aston Villa and all these teams don't have the bench of Man City and you know they got back within that 15 minutes like was it three three goals in six minutes or something like that so you gotta think about it people and um we know our weakness i'd rather know what our weakness is than you know try to solve issues that's not even in in, in our in our actual um work ethic if you know what i mean like it, sh it shouldn't like if you look at the the, the way we play we play like full throttle football or we play like counter attacking and we know how to open up teams that way but we struggle with deep line defending teams so we know what the issue is and uh, that's what we've got to solve that's all we've got to solve and that's where the training comes in and uh, the players that actually can 
contribute on, on, the, on those kind of games comes in as well. So, yeah, a lot of work to do, in my opinion, man, because <clears throat> I don't want to go through another season of the same stuff of previous seasons, like struggling deep line defensive teams. Enough, enough, enough. Come on, man. Enough. Like, we, we, we faced enough of that, and it's time to change. It's time to change people. So, yeah, that's enough of the Premier League. I don't want to keep going on about it. <clears throat> Uh, there's more stuff to to worry about, um, you know, like Mane signing a new contract, or if he's if he's going to buy Munich. From what I've heard of Mane, he said um, I haven't decided what to do yet. Liverpool fans love me, don't want me to stay, but yeah, but he can still go. But what's the replacement? What's the counter attack to that? That's what FSG need to come in and the management need to come in as well. Yeah, so let's talk about the cups. Um, obviously the League Cup uh, The Carabao Cup uh, Was the first one Terrible game uh, Went to penalty issue at And we won it that way um, Everybody knows City I think they equaled it So Liverpool need to get the record back And we did We did We did We got the record back And we won that cup And penalty issue at And uh, everybody knows Kyle has scored the winning penalty And you know The, the rest is history And Kepa kicked it over the bar uh, as for the FA Cup, we went on a good run. We faced City, and uh, that game in Wembley uh, in, in the semi-final of City was an outstanding game. I think that was the best game of the season because we found that how to play against City when we put them in the in the back foot. That's how we can beat them, and you know, make them panic. And they were all over the place in that game. Obviously, they got a couple of goals back, but it was going to happen if we we're going to make mistakes. Because second half, they had to come out and you know get the goals and. Uh, Lucky for us, they didn't get the third one. Otherwise, it went to, uh, it went to penalties or they would have won the game. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's how the FA Cup went. Uh, we, 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 went we went to the final and faced Chelsea again. Penalty shoot us again. We played much better than the first, uh, the, so the, the Carabao Cup, to be honest, in the FA Cup. Uh, I think we deserve to win this game. And, um, you know, the rest is history. Simicast scores the winning penalty. Uh, while uh, Mason Mount missed his one. And, yeah, uh, we've done it. Uh, we haven't had the domestics for a while, but I think it's about time we had we had it. Uh, is it is this the season we should have went for all trophies? I don't know. Maybe we just stumbled on it because you know the 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 the, the players that were playing in the reserves um, on the bench have overachieved probably in the in the cups. And you know, Klopp said, you know what, let's go for it, let's win it, and not knowing that it could tire the the the, the players out. And it did. It just uh, the, the the whole season. You, you got to think about it, people. Like, if you play in all these cups, like the Champions League, the Premier League, the League Cup, etc., etc., um, it will affect your um, you know rhythm because it's just too many games. And don't forget, there's the Afghan on top of that, international football on top of that as well. So the players are actually tired. They're absolutely tired during the season and. Um, it shows that it showed at the end, especially because that Wolves game, and Spurs game. You know, you could bring up a lot of games. It was just, yeah, it was just, it just caught up. It just caught up. I don't think, uh, you know, when people say we've got a fully um, full squad that can compete with the big teams, I don't think they're looking to the overall. You know, what I mean, the overall team. I don't think we have strength and depth in every position, especially in that midfield. So. It was always going to catch up with us. Um, the lack of, you know, no, know how in the midfield, the lack of, you know, creativity, the lack of goals as well, really, really, really uh, affected us, in my opinion, in, in, in the league and, and the cups as well. Uh, hence why we, we, we went to penalty shootouts, you know what I mean? 120 minute games, man. Like, come on, man. H how, how is that possible in, in, in any walks of life? Like, two games in a row, like that. And then you, you go to the league, long games, you go to the Champions League, long games, and then you go to AFCON. You know, like there's so many stuff we was doing uh, this this past season. It was unnatural, but we've done it. We've made it to every game. And um, yeah, that's how it is. That's how it is. Uh, the Cups, at least we won it. Uh, and um, that's the most important thing. Like, at least we ended up with something than nothing. Yeah. So we move on to the Champions League. The group we had, everybody said there's a group of death. It was. It was a group of death. You know, when you go to AC Milan's of this world, Atletico Madrid's of this world. You know what I mean? It's not it's not an easy it's not an easy group. So 
we had to come out of that we won every game came out of that um, and then we went to the last 16 quarterfinals semifinals and to the final um, that final it was weird you know what I mean the fans couldn't get in um, delayed games delayed, sorry delayed the game everything was just going wrong from the start on that final for some reason in, in Paris um, we started good we started good in in, in 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 the Champions League final, but if you if you're not if you're not like I said in the in the in the pre in the review of that game, if you're not scoring when you're in a position of power, the rest of the game will be difficult because the team in front of you who are giving away possession, they're giving you like respect in that in that way, and they are deep line defending. They only need that one moment, and. The unfortunate thing for us, if it was in the first half they scored a goal, then I think we would be more um, vicious in the second half and you know like later stage, later, later stages of that half of the first half. But it's, it was in the second half, and the minutes were ticking down, and we just wasn't getting into the game. And everybody's blaming Trent for the goal. Listen, Trent has his faults, which is lack of concentration. But that's where the coaches come in. That's where the coaches get big bucks. I mean, like, and there was two instances in that in that goal that uh, Liverpool didn't stop before it got to the the Trent issue. If you know what I mean, there was Robertson and there was Van Dijk that could have stopped the guy. He went past Robertson. Van Dijk does what he does normally, like he runs back to his box and then he tries this leggy, leggy, long leggy thing, which I don't understand. If you stopped him where he was before he got into the box, take him out or try to get the ball, then you don't you wouldn't have the goal. So this is what I'm saying about about like players in in, in that midfield or in, in that defense. Just in general, take players out, take a yellow card. That's what they would do. Why do we have to be good? Why do we have to be nice? Come on, man. Come on. It's frustrating, honestly. It's frustrating, man, when you see things like that. Man City, before every team don't attack them because they take them out in that midfield before they even like get to their goal. Real Madrid, Casemiro, the whole game he was pulling down players. Mane got fouled in the whole game. The referee wasn't even doing anything about that, to be fair. But they got away with it. That's the difference. Us, we just try to play our football. I know, like, we'd be more proud to play our football, you know, and we could say we played that way and we won the trophy. But sometimes you gotta be street smart, man. You gotta be like vicious in some in, cir in certain circumstances. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be like scare these teams, man. Passing is not the only way that actually teams fear you. Is what you do off the ball as well, man. And we don't do a lot. We don't. Which is nice. This is where we need to come in next season. We need a ruthless side. We need a vicious side to that nice issue we had before. So let's let's counterattack that nice thing. Like let's get that nice thing out of the way and be more vicious and see where we can get to. Because this is five seasons of being nice. Where about the other way? Graham Souness way, Steve McMahon, Ronnie Whelan way. Why don't we do some much Sharano? Why don't we do something like that? And see where we could get to the next few seasons with it. I guarantee you we'll be more successful than the nice side. That's what we got to do. There's no excuses in that Champions League, people. Like I said, there was two incidents that happened before the ball got to Vinicius in the far post. Stop blaming Trent. Trent had an outstanding game in my opinion. I don't think he had a bad game. That kid was defending against Benzema's and, and Vinicius. What did Vinicius do in the whole game before that goal? What did Benzema do in that style when he was getting that Trent? Nothing. Sometimes people forget. He gets doubled up on. Salah doesn't come back and defend for him. Now I mean, so, so you got to think, man. Stop, stop talking about our right back's defensive issues. But look at the team as a whole defensive issues we had in that game we've only lost four games and one of them was a winning tie against Inter Milan 
So basically, we lost three games all season. The Champions League final and the two Premier League games against West Ham and Leicester. Other than that, the draws are the ones that are letting us down. And a silly final with the stupid ga game tactics that cost us because of a silly goal we conceded at the wrong time. Like I said, people, it's, it's, it, the issue is not like individuals sometimes. Of course, we're not a team full of individuals. We're a team. Like We're collective. We're, we're all as one. We just got to work in, all as one to get to where we want to get to in the next few seasons. I think we've got to rebuild. I think we need a few more players, maybe two or three in certain areas. We need a clinical striker. We need a brutal midfielder. We need a, probably another right back to help out Trent. I mean, have, get, give him some rest, give him some competition so he could be alert in majority of the games. We might even need a goal scoring midfielder. Like, I know we scored a lot of goals, but Man City caught us up with no striker as well. But even though we don't play with a striker, we, we was way ahead in the goals. Salah dropped off. Jota dropped off. Mane is consistent, but it's not the Mane we know. Diaz came, blew everyone away, but still, we fell short. What's the counter attack for next season? That's what I want to know. Like, what are we going to do to try to win the Premier League and, and, and the Champions League? I don't care about the, about the domestics anymore. We finally got them. Thank you very much. I could see them right here. Thank you very much. But uh, I think we've got a bigger fish to fry. Uh, the kids can play in there, you know, like the likes of uh, Carvalho, um, Harvey Elliott, and uh, Curtis Jones, you know, etc. These these players can play in, in in those cups and see where they can go from there. But yeah, we've got bigger fish to fry next season. We need to rest the players a lot. International football is coming, the World Cup as well. So yeah, there's there's a lot of things going to happen in, in the coming season. But we've just got to be smart, man. I don't give a damn if Man City buy Haaland, whatever his name is. They, he, they still score a lot of goals anyway. I mean, so what's the difference? Come on. He's more for the Champions League than the Premier League anyway. And we need to stop them. We can, can you imagine like Man City winning the Champions League? They'll be unstoppable if we let them have, have that. Come on, people. Got, got a big, we've got a big, bigger fish to fry, man. It's not just that, man. Come on. Come on. Yeah, we know our weakness. We know what players we need to get. And... We we've just gotta go after them. If we're ambitious, that is, you know, what I mean? if the owners are ambitious, the managers are ambitious. Like, we need to do what needs to be done. Get the right players in. Get 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 the right formation in for certain games. And you know, rest the players, but make sure the quality that comes in is not too far from the quality of the first teamers. Yeah, so that's my season review. I've discussed all the cups. And we move on. Just don't dwell on the past, people. Rivals are always gonna come at you and you know be you know bitchy and you know um, make fun of you. But who wouldn't have swapped Liverpool season? And who wouldn't have swapped that? Going for every trophy. Yes, we failed in the final hurdle for two. But how many teams can say they they nearly done it? Not many. Not many. And we tried. With players that was like out for the long term, they came back and nearly done it. We could call us the we could call ourselves the nearly men, but we still got walked out with two trophies. As for the parade, congratulations to everyone that won down there. Congratulations to Liverpool Football Club, women and men, and the youth as well, because you deserve it. Don't let any other fans tell you otherwise. They forget what we lost in the past three years what we didn't celebrate in the past three years and um, we was like locked 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 inside our houses and, and and not many people even look into things like that lost a lot of people along the way mums dads brothers sisters everything but people don't look into things like that there's no you got rival fans say to you like why are you celebrating the league cup and the FA cup but we're celebrating life as it is we're still here healthy and we're still going strong after that that three years of hell i mean we we've overcome a pandemic and people are questioning like why are you celebrating that and i saw that parade yesterday i wish i was there now but sometimes you can't make it to things and it was outstanding man it showed the world like liverpool have the best fans in the world there's no doubt about it 
And I've always said it. We might have the best fans in the world, but the team we have have to be a mirror image of our football uh, of, of our fans. And finally, we got something like that. And um, yeah, that's all I got to say about that, people. Um, I'll be back next season. Don't worry. Watch alongs are coming back. Chat shows are coming back. And like I said, I'm going to be more happier in my you know domain than before. Don't get me wrong, man. I enjoyed every minute of um, doing contents with other people, and um, it was enjoyable. I'm telling you. But sometimes when you take a break, you you need you need to refresh, and you know it's hard work, people. Like it's, it's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Now I'm more relaxed, and I come on here whenever I can. And yeah, I just can't wait for next season, people. I honestly can't wait for next season. I can't wait to see what we're going to buy. I can't wait, like, if we get to another Champions League final, win the Premier League. I just hope we do something, you know what I mean? Because we're not, we're not, we're not getting any younger. We're getting older, if you know what I mean. And um, the more championships we win in the next couple of years, the better for the club. So we could put ourselves in that pedestal nobody can touch. Um, yeah, people, like, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, support the team, man. They've done all they can. They run them, themselves to the to the ground. Uh, I don't know what more you want from them. You know what I mean? They tried something that was impossible. They nearly got there, but they fell in the final hurdle. But still a good season, in my opinion. After I come down, I still think it's a good season, considering where this club was in the beginning of the season. So, yes, like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you. I'll see you. I'll see you soon. Take care, everyone.